So when you want to get your, your, your bird beak on, um, one strategy is that you block in the whole bird with sort of light, loose lines. But some people will, will initially just work that area right in the face of the bird until they kind of feel that the bird is looking back at them. I know that that's an approach taken by Lawrence McQueen, who is one of the, the bird uh, watercolor masters. Um, and once that part is kind of feels birdy to him, then he knows that he can continue on with the rest of the picture. And the bird will look like if he's drawing a hermit thrush, it's gonna look like a hermit thrush because that bird beak eye, the expression of the bird is right. But if you're trying to draw a crow and at the very end, you're trying to get that kind of crow look and you're having difficulty, um, that can be, be challenging. What, what, some, uh, what McQueen does, I think, is if he, if he can't, if that part isn't working for him, he'll just start another little sketch and then that bird starts to look back at him and then you have the green light for drawing in the rest of the bird and it's gonna feel like you're, it's gonna feel like you're beastie. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw three birds. There's going to be a bird looking straight at you. There's going to be a bird um, looking from the side and their middle one is going to be a three quarter view of the bird. And this is going to be sort of a generic bird that we're going to build up in these three positions. And we'll look at a little bit of the differences between different species. But um, there's enough similarity between birds that if you can kind of feel comfortable sticking the beak into to, to one bird, you'll be able to, you'll have the bag of tricks to do it in all the rest of them. So I'm gonna suggest that on your piece of paper, you give yourself three circles about, uh, about yay big. And um, we are going to then carve those with, with crosshairs. Um, if you were here for the, um, the contour line workshop, then especially that center drawing is going to look very familiar to you. What I'm doing at the start are giving some basic orientation lines, one through the middle of the head, and the other right below the eye of the bird. And as the bird moves its head around, those, the, those two, those crosshairs are going to move as well. So when it's looking straight at you, that's the one on the left. When it's turned all the way from the side, you can't see the one down the middle. So when it's turned all the way from the side, all you see is that line that comes out underneath the eye. And here's the cool thing about it. That line is, you're gonna continue it out. It is gonna go right through the middle of the beak. So, right from the start with this first line, if you're drawing the bird in profile, you draw your circle of a head and you draw that one eye in, that's the eye beak line. Your eye is gonna sit on top of that line. That's also gonna be the direction that your beak is going. And so already you're getting sort of the orientation of the direction that this bird is looking. So if I want to put a beak onto these, for the two on the left, I have to first establish the place that the beak is going to be emerging from. So um, imagine if this is a snowball and you put a carrot in it, you then take the carrot out. What is the shape of the hole that is, is left behind? On the one on the left, you see it's sort of, it's an, an, an angular six-sided box. The bottom of the box, the lower bill is going to be a little bit wider in its base. And the one in the middle, I'm sorry, the one on the top, um, the sides of it are going to tilt in a little bit more. If I'm drawing that same shape on the one that's looking up, I have to sort of imagine that shape foreshortened around that box. So especially the far side of it, it's the far side of it is going to feel a little bit trimmed. The other thing that I'm going to do here is on that, on that one that is uh, on the three quarter view, something that gave me a lot of difficulty for a long time was putting in, when I go to put in my beak, um, 
if my bird is here, you know, do I, I, I would like to have my beak sticking straight out, right? But sometimes I would put it in and it's at an angle here. It's at an angle here. What exactly is the angle that I am going to draw if my head, I want it looking this way, how can I get it so that my beak is pointing straight out this way? The secret is in envisioning that ball of the bird's head, don't think of it as a flat circle, think of it as a sphere. That's why if I kind of back up here, see these white lines that I'm putting in? Those are kind of lines that are tracing around the back side. So imagine yourself following the dark line up through the middle of the front of the bird, back down the white line on the far side, right? That, those, those lines go all the way around the head of the bird. And if you visualize the intersection of those lines in the front and the back, and then you draw a line through the middle of those lines, that's the direction that the bird's beak is going to be pointing. So if your, line, if your beak then is at an angle that's lower than that, you're gonna have a bird with a bent beak. I don't actually draw in, usually draw in these two um, intersection points, but when I'm trying to think of what's going on, I'll just visualize these inside my head and that will help me get my beak to end up being straight. If at the start, it helps you to just draw some circles and place your, your, your contour um, lines across it to sort of find those two points and then connect them with a line. That would be a really useful little diagram, a little doodle to make for yourself on a regular basis. So from here, I am going to start to to draw in the actual beaks on these birds. So I've got where it comes from, and I have um, uh, on, on, the, on that sphere that I've made. And now I want to start to draw in the beak. On the side view, that's the one which we're all the most um, kind of comfortable with. That's gonna be more straightforward, but it gets weird when you have the bird looking straight towards you or at a three quarter view angle. So if I have a pencil that's this long and I hold it at an angle, right, I'm gonna hold it off to, to the, the, the side here. So see how um, in this view, my pencil goes all the way from the post to my ear. Now I rotate it at an angle. You're the, because it's at, coming at a foreshortened angle towards you, the pencil appears shorter. The same thing is gonna happen with the bird's beak. So it ends up being really mentally difficult to, you know your robin's beak should be this long, but when you are drawing it at a three quarter view angle, you're gonna draw it shorter than that. And this ends up being a mental gymnastics thing that is hard to do. I find myself constantly in a three quarter view, draw, view drawing the bird's bill length to be the same as if I were looking at it from the side. Because my brain just doesn't want to do foreshortening. And I have to kind of go, stop and kind of go, okay, draw, the, it's gonna be okay. Just draw the bill shorter, draw the bill shorter. It's gonna be okay. And just let myself do that. <clears throat> So here is a bee eater, and we're seeing it from a, this bird has a long curved bill, but in a foreshortened view, that is going to appear shorter. Here's a kingfisher, the same thing. This bird has an enormous, enormous bill, but in a three quarter view, we're not seeing that. We're seeing it as shorter. Just sort of one male, like, could you, so here, here'd be the real challenge, because we all associate hummingbirds with having this long, 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 long bill, right? But what if you're drawing a hummingbird three-quarter view angle? It is, it is surprisingly difficult to draw, and look at how short that bill actually is on the paper. Could you get yourself to draw one that, that was that short? That would be the challenge. Right? 
Um, the, by the way, these drawings that you're looking at, they all come from the same website. Um, these are the, uh, the, the photographs of Vivek Kanzode, and his website is um, birdpixel.com. So if you want to practice doing some of this, I want to send everybody over to Bird Pixel, and um, you'll find incredible photographs of birds to practice your birdie beaks from. Alrighty. So, given those two, uh, let, let's so let's take a look at the one on the right first. So, that's sort of what we're expecting to see. I've got a curved top. I've got a straighter bottom. The thickness of those parts of the bill are going to be different on different species of birds, but this is, this is what we're used to drawing. This is what we're used to drawing. The cha more challenging one is that one, that three quarter view in the middle there. On this one, the first thing I'm going to do is the tip of the beak is not going to be as long. Then from, you see on that, that face, that, that shape on the, 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 the face, I go to the topmost point of that, and I'm going to make a line down, and it's gonna curve a little bit more towards the end, right to where I want to intersect on my line. Now, I'm going to go from that same point to the bottommost point of that shape. So from the topmost corner to the bottommost corner, I'm going to be drawing those lines in. Again, you have to make this shorter than, um, than what you're going to expect. The one that's coming straight towards me, I'm not drawing in the top and the bottom because it's coming straight towards me. Now, let's take a look at how I'm going to um, right now, those two, those, those bird beaks, they feel like somebody took a carrot and stuck it in a snowball, All right? It's coming up flat against the feathered face of the bird, and it's not going to look convincing. So what we're going to do is we're going to sculpt the area right where the beak comes into the head just a little bit. We're going to sculpt that out and see how that is going to look, All right? Um, so some species of birds, they have a really skinny beak, right? Some birds have a long beak, but I'm basically gonna be doing the same thing on all my birds. I'm going to have the, um, that little, that eye beak line is sort of the middle of my bill. So here I have the skull of a smaller bird. And see, there's a little bit of a curve in that mouth, kind of comes out. Here, this one has more of a curve to it. And some birds have a deeper bill. So here is so this one is shorter and it's deeper. So it's starting and stopping further apart on the sphere of that head. So here was previous, here's this. So you can have different lengths, different thicknesses, and there is no absolute rule. What you actually have to do then is you have to look at each bird. You'll find that different taxonomic groups will tend to have different shapes. Um, so you'll find um, finches with finch-shaped bills. Um, you'll find warblers with thin warbly bit, warbler bills. But if you go out on the Galapagos Islands, you can find finches with warbler bills. Um, so the, what you have to do is you want to look at the actual proportions of the bill that you're looking at. If you want it to look at what, like whatever species you're drawing, you want to get what is the thickness, what is the length, is it curved, is it straight, and be aware that that's going to be different for different birds. So there isn't a generic bill that we're going to be putting onto our bird. We're going to draw now in the, um, the nostril for this, 
In the upper bill, there's a nostril. On some birds like ravens and crows, that nostril gets covered by little bristles. So, um, but on a lot of birds, you'll actually be able to see that little nostril there. And then here is the angle of my mouth. Um, notice on this one that I put in a really sharp, steep angle. Before those others, it was more of a gentle curve, right? But here I've drawn in a big angle. On large nutcracker seed-eating birds and also on um, icterids, uh, birds like the uh, blackbirds, you're going to see this really sharp angle down in the corner of the mouth. So right where the beak is disappearing into the head, you'll see this change in the angle. So this would be a blackbird, this would be a gross beak. You see that big angle there. Be interesting to make a diagram um, and sort of see if we could figure out the physics of, of what is going on there. I'm sure there's a really cool nutcracker wrench analogy that is happening in here. And that would be fun for somebody with uh, a good knowledge of physics, create that as an infographic for us and put it up on our Nature Journal Club Facebook page. That would be really fun, All right? So on this one, because it's got a big beak, I'm gonna put in that little curve. And now I want to, to put in the feathers that are going to come up to that part of the skull. So I'm gonna draw in three lines. Um, one, on the top part of the bill, a little curve. And this one has a slight curve. It can be more curved, kind of curving out into the bill. The same with the lower bill. That curve, um, where the, the, the feathers are gonna come in, sort of a little gentle curve. And then here's the, the really big thing. This is the, probably a big mistake that lots of people make on their bird bills. The chin feathers come out and actually attach partway up the underside of the bill, All right? So the bill is really sticking into the head. If I just um, draw the head coming down and the, 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 the beak meets the, the sort of the outline of the head and I don't get that chin, um, your birds are not going to, the, the silhouette of their head is not gonna feel right. And the other thing that's gonna get really confusing is when you start to draw on the stripes and other details on the head of the bird, you're missing a big chunk of the lower face of the bird. So where you would draw in your throat versus your malar and all these sorts of things are gonna get really confused. So you want that little bit of fluff that comes out on the underside of your bird head. Take a look at this one. So, here we see a curve where the top edge of those feathers curve in, back to the corner of the mouth. On the lower bill, do you see that, that smaller curve where those bright yellow feathers are coming in? That's the malar zone of the, of the bird where those bright yellow feathers insert. They tuck right up and smack into the lower, the lower mandible, the lower bill there. And then you can see those chin feathers sticking out really far. So there are feathers from the bird's body that are kind of coming out into the bill. And there are parts of the bill that are coming back into the head. So it's not just a straight cut off line. So expect to see a curve on the top, expect to see a curve on the bottom. They don't have to line up back. See, in this drawing, they line up, all right? They don't have to do that. So here, there's a bigger one on the top, and that comes more forward, about the same amount forward that the chin feathers do on this bird. Compare that with this one. You see those red chin feathers on the bottom tucking up. You see blue feathers coming in to a little curve on the lower bill. And you actually can see the nostril on this, on this bunting here, right? Little curve of feathers on the top edge. One more. Here's our corvid. 
Um, so on our little corvid here, first take a look at what the feathers are doing on the top part of the bill. So there are black and blue feathers that are coming in, turning a little bit bristly and pointing forward, making a curve facing to the, the round part of which is facing to the right on the top edge of this bill. Follow that edge of the mouth back. You see a little bit of gray and white feathers coming into a little curve on the lower part of the bill. And then chin feathers coming out about the same distance that the feathers on the forehead come out into that curve on the top of the beak. So two curves, one on the top bill, one on the lower, and those feathers that come out underneath the throat. So on this little uh, photograph here, you can see that angle really well. Um, to follow that top part of the bill and it cuts down. So if that is the, that, that cool angle, those throat feathers sticking out far, you see the feathers tucking up into the lower part of the bill. And here making more of a straight line a little bit less of a curve, um, more straight like I had in my earlier diagram across the, the top. Jack, is it possible for you to use your mouse? Can you take your mouse over? Um, unfortunately, I'm wiggling my mouse right now. It's not working, okay. And um, my mouse is invisible to me. Um, would it be helpful if I, on the piece of paper next to me, uh, use the document camera just to reiterate the points I was just making? Yeah, I think that might be helpful. There, there's someone was asking that it would be nice to to show what what you're you're looking at. <laughs> Instead of this, follow the curve over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's do that. I'm going to. Um, uh, stop sharing here and I'm going to switch over to the document camera right here um, and so let me zoom this a little bit and I'm just going to interject here for those of you who are watching this and you want to see um, Jack's screen larger you can put it on speaker view or if you want a mouse over to um, Jack's um, little video square and there'll be a little blue box that pops up on the right hand side with three white dots. If you click on that, there's an option there that it should be, you should see a um, pin video or spotlight video. If you click one of those, it'll continue to make Jack's screen larger for you. Check this out. I, I don't think I have a lag now. Check this out. Remember last time when we did a little test of this, there was a long lag, but now I think I can actually draw and talk at the same time. So here is your bird head, right? And you're gonna have your bird beak coming off this way. So what the, what I'm, the corner of the mouth is gonna come down here. And um, the, the feathers, nostril, the feathers are usually going to tuck in somewhere up in here in a little curve, a little curve right up in there. And then the lower bill will have a curve and it could be in here like this. In other birds, you'll find it actually curves back here so that there's so that there's this part is up here and then the second curve can be further back. Then my throat feathers are going to come up here.
Was that helpful? So I've got curve one, curve two, and then my throat coming out below that bill. Um, let's do a slightly different one. So this bird gets a big broad beak. Big curve down here. I'm going to come down here and just tuck this in a little bit here. Put in a curve. So curve one, curve two and then throat feathers stick out here. Now your forehead on your birds, and we'll show you some photographs of this in just a moment. The foreheads of some birds, right from the edge of the beak, it's gonna continue on like that. So there's no real angle change right here. On other birds, you're going to see a, a change in this angle. So that um, helps you kind of get the, the, you want to look at, is this like a blackbird? If this were a blackbird, longer, well here, you would, or a meadowlark, meadowlark would be coming straight back like that. Um, other birds, other species, there's gonna be more of a forehead. Um, Melinda, since I've got the, the cam out right now, are there any other questions that are relevant to what we were, what I'm just showing yeah, here? Just ask, what about a raptor? Ah, so raptors, um, raptors, raptor faces and things. I think we ought to um, save raptors and ducks um, for a different, I can, I can show people a little bit of raptor stuff at the end of this. I actually don't have, um, any uh, raptor reference material queued up for people. Um, this is mostly songbirds here, but I can do, um, show some uh, raptor uh, tricks towards the, uh, the, the end of the workshop. Um, well, if, if people would like that. All right. So I'm gonna jump back to the screen share here. So you, here you can see those two um, forehead angles that, oh, can, just checking in Melinda, can you see my document camera? Yes. In the, oh, this, this is, I think this <laughs> awesome. is gonna give me, <laughs> right, new teaching tool. I can do <laughs> both simultaneously. This is gonna get, this is gonna get cool. All right. Um, do we, we do have a question. Someone asked, in the three-quarter view of the beak, where exactly does the beak line connect to top and bottom lines? Where exactly does the um, beak mm -hmm. connect to the top and bottom lines? Let's go back to, um, actually, let's, let's say, let me uh, just, so I can do this on the big, all this stuff on the big screen. Um, let me, um, just go through a couple more prepared slides here, and then we'll just jump everything over to the document camera. And we'll, we'll take a closer look at that. All right, so take a look at the beak to forehead angle. Look at those black feathers coming out underneath the beak. Look at the angle on the top, the angle on the bottom. All right, that's what is gonna make this feel like you're fitting that beak into the head. Look at the forehead angle here, right? Compare here, forehead angle here. Here, there's a really steep step. Those yellow feathers come out far underneath. So um, on the three quarter view, 
um, the, the, the top and the bottom lines are going to both come out to that white line that is the, the, the central um, axis if the bird has a relatively straight beak. If there's a dip or a curve in the tip of the bird's beak, um, then it would go out straight along that axis for a while and then tip, dip down even further at the end. So that would, that would change depending on the species that you're looking at. So let's wrap some feathers into the beak on the right, the middle, and on the one that's coming, pointing straight towards us. So here I put in my little curve on the top, the bottom, and some chin feathers. Notice how I made my chin feathers a little bit scruffy. So if you're watching up in the little kind of inset thing, I have my beak here and my chin feathers here. Um, I can put a few little lines. I'll take my pencil tip and I will press and flick, press and flick. So to give a little bit of kind of scruffiness to this part here, sometimes the, the bird's throat is a little bit bristly down here. So I, instead of just a straight line, you can cut a couple little lines across that. That makes it start to feel a little bit shaggy down there, sort of whiskery zone. For the um, shadows on this, if I leave a little bit of, I think of as I kind of put up some tone on the side of this, I am leaving a little bit on the top edge that will be catching some light. And also along the upper edge of, or the lower edge of the upper bill. So that can, um, so just as you are, um, I'll go back here on the dock camera view, if I have a bird beak here. So what I can do is just put in a little bit of shadow in that area and that leaves some white right along the top edge and along this edge here. Does that show up in the little inset? Yes. Should I draw that larger? Well, so I, can I just interject here? There's a couple of people that are having trouble seeing that. So if, if everyone goes to their screen, there's a two white lines that show up in between the the PowerPoint picture, the still picture, and Jack's video screen. If you mouse over that, um, those two white lines, you'll see a, a long gray line that goes down separating these two columns. And you can slide that back and forth and make John, um, Jack's active screen larger and smaller at any time. Ooh. Yeah, it's a cool, cool function. Wow. Okay, thank you. For the lower bill, that's mostly in shadow. And I could just put that in. Um, oh, one other little note just on, on line drawing bird heads. Here is, here's my bird beak. What I often do when I'm drawing in that little line between the upper bill and the lower bill is that as I come towards the front of the bill, I will often make that a little bit more indistinct and actually just fade it out. So that line often will stop before it gets to the bill. Very often the tip of the bill, if, they, if it fits together neatly or there's a slight little overlap, it's hard to see that line between the upper bill and the lower bill clearly all the way to the end. And so that just makes it look a little bit more like kind of a cartoon symbol of a beak if I do this, like watch, kind of going from this in the little inset picture to this. Right, this then looks much more like, I know that this should be one part, this should be another part, here's another part, but it doesn't look as good as if I, as if I just let that line fade out before it gets there. That gives you this kind of corner of the mouth being here.
For the one that's pointing towards you, there it's more rounded on the top, it's more angular on the bottom. If I put some feather edges in on that, right where the corners of the mouth come in, sort of follow that line back, and the bottom corners of the bill do the same thing. Also, right on the very top, let me just sort of back up so it disappears. See that little one on the very top? There are feathers on the right side of the head and on the left side of the head that kind of merge together. And those, um, where those merge together, you sometimes see a little bit of a line coming right off the top of the bill. That often helps also kind of orient which direction a head is looking in a sketch. So there's five little lines that can help from the front view that beak feel like it's not just stuck onto the side of a, of a blob, but start to work it into the feathers. For shadows, I'm putting shadows on one side of the beak and on part of the underside. And along the top of the beak, I'm not coming all the way to the very center of that beak. Um, I'm leaving a little bit more white. There's, you notice that there's more, um, more light color on the top part of that beak than shadow. So don't bring that shadow all the way over. That gives you the part of the beak that rounds around the middle of it. Um, more room to be catching light and reflecting light back towards you. For the three quarter view, oh, so here is, uh, we're seeing some, the, uh, we're seeing that kind of that, that angle. You're seeing those, you know, here in the front, you can see that there's the middle of the beak there. Here you actually see that kind of suture of the mouth less distinct towards the center. It's kind of a nice, nice effect there. This bird, because you're really looking up underneath of it, underneath it, the bottom edge of this beak, rather than looking more straight, you're really seeing that as a strong curve. That's because you're, you have a, a, a view from underneath its chin. If this bird lowered its head towards you a little bit, that would straighten out a little bit. But this is you know, a strange angle to draw a bird from. And what's going to make it work is the light and the dark. Take a look at the shapes of the shadows on the right-hand side on the top beak, there's a small triangle of shadow. Underneath, there is a small triangle of light on the left-hand side, because the whole bottom surface and the right side of it are covered in shadow. So those, if you don't have those shadows in, and you just had the shape, you'd have a weird kind of Star Trek emblem shape, but it wouldn't really start to pop out to you as, oh, this is a three-dimensional bird beak looking towards you. But if I um, shade in the bottom surface of it, and notice how the edge of that goes all the way to the point of the beak, the right-hand side of it, and on the top, the shading the right-hand side, but not all the, but letting it be white on the very, um, on, on, on the center part of that, that beak, that's going to sculpt that beak towards you. Now let's take a look at the three-quarter view. So I'm going to see a lot more of the underside than the top side. So where um, I've drawn in the top edge of this and the suture of the mouth, notice that the suture of the mouth fades before it gets to the tip. 
And that is closer to the top than it is to the bottom. For the underside, I am seeing the feathers that come out on the underside of the chin sticking out into the underside of the bill. So let's go without that, with that again. So kind of curving out into the underside of that bill. And then from the far corner, cutting straight down to give you the sort of the side of the head of the bird. Jack, there's a um, couple suggestions here. If you can go up to the top of your screen and um, under view options, um, step out of full screen and see if you can use your mouse then. Ah, can you see me now? Does, does, does this work? We can, we can see the mouse. The, um, the screen is smaller. All right. Oh, check us out. All right, there we go. Now we're talking. We're, it takes a village, right? <laughs> we're getting this worked out. So um, yes, rather than saying there's a curve over to the edge, now we can point. All right, yeah, so here we go. Um, let's back this up one all right so i'm saying for the top here is just a little hint of nostril and this suture in the middle of the mouth is coming it's going to meet here where the the line that comes the the eye line the beak eye line meets here so i want to come to this point if this was a bird which had a beak that that, uh, that then came down at a strong angle i would put that down at a very strong angle from here on, so here is the side of the lower bill. Here is the bottom edge of the lower bill going to where this line comes into that corner. So we're not seeing the other side of the lower bill, but we see this side. So here's the top edge of the upper bill. Here is the side of the lower bill. Here is the underside. And what's gonna happen is I want those feathers to pooch out like this to stick out further on the bill than this back edge. So when I go to here to start to draw that in, right, that's what I get. So I am going from this corner here, that is the bottom edge of the lower bill, and then curving that up into here. When I add feathers around that, here's that one on the top. I like putting that one in. It helps sort of people sort of start to see this angle going back here. And also as an artist, it helps me kind of keep, it's an orientation place. Where's the sort of the center line of my drawing coming in? Here's that line continuing at the corner of the mouth. And from lines coming down from the back corners, of the beak here. This is the whole chin throat area of the bird. This would be what's called the malar, M-A-L-A-R region of the bird. In another workshop, we'll get into those feather tracks. But you see how that was, is this helpful, Melinda? Yes. Okay. All right. So from there, I can add some shadows in. And what I'm really gonna do is put shadow in on that under surface. That really helps kind of define this as here, here's this whole surface down here, it's in shade, where you kind of come around to a different side here, this is in light going into shade. That helps the viewer see that this is one plane here going around this corner and into this other plane there. So here is without those shadows, and here's using shadows to define that other underside of the jaw. If I put a little highlight in on that, 
it really starts to look like a hard surface that, and kind of gives you a sense of the texture of that beak. So let me kind of come over here. Here's without that highlight. Here's with that highlight down to the beak that helps this sort of feel kind of plasticky. Little bit of highlight on here. I probably could have punched that a little bit more. It would have made this look more shiny. The final thing is to place the eye. Um, we tend to put the eyes too far back here in the middle of the head. So the distance between the eye and the beak is really, really useful and important to get in your bird. So, um, so here is eye. So this is the back of the bird's head going down to the bird's nape. This is not a bump by its shoulder. Its shoulder bump is gonna be down here. Um, so here's the back of the head. I have not put the eye in the middle of the head. It's closer to the front than you think it should be. Now, if the bird fluffs out its feathers, the distance from the eye to the back can change. But the distance from the front is not going to change. So um, really, that's, that's sort of hard, that's built into the anatomy of this thing. So really look at that distance here. And often you're gonna find a little bit of kind of a zone of scruffy, short bristly feathers between the eye and the beak. It kind of makes the bird look a little bit more serious. All right. And uh, that zone is called the lores, L-O-R-E-S. I didn't used to think that that was really an important part of getting the look and the expression of the bird. Now I think it's really important. It really helps you kind of get the, the bird looking like, without that, they look just sort of a little bit too kind of golly. You know, but birds, birds can kind of, they can have a serious look to them. And, and uh, that connection between the sort of, the, the, I imagine sort of where your spectacles would be, um, that's going to help you place those. So those are, are some ideas and tricks on drawing bird heads. Um, looking over that list, what are some uh, questions that you see about, about bird heads? Um, are, are there any that have shown up on the chat? Um, yes, there, somebody just, Della Luna asked, are all textures the same, all plasticky? I think she, she might be referring to the beak, oh, the yeah. shine you were adding. Oh, hi there, Della. Um, so uh, Della, by the way, uh, gave me a lot of really um, critical early help in starting to navigate my way around this uh, Zoom platform. Thank you again for that, Della. I really, really appreciate that. Um, the, um, yes, the, 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 the texture of the bird beak is that kind of that uh, glossy, plasticky look. Um, the beak has keratin on it, much like your, um, you know, hair or fingernails. And so that it kind of gives them a, a, a gloss, a, a shine to them. And the best way to suggest that is, you know, if there's part of the beak that you want it to look more shiny, the more that you kind of pump up kind of contrast with a, a reflection in there, then, well, that looks like I've got a grain of rice on my bill. Let's try that down again here. Um, the, if you want it to look more shiny than, you know, a, a, a sharper highlight, um, and if you want it to look more dull, then less of a sharp highlight. But anytime there's a real sharp highlight, that will, people will read that as, you know, you know, bright, shiny, reflective surface. Is there another question? Um, yeah, I know there's some questions about eyes, but that could even be a whole new, another class about how to do the highlight in the eye. Someone asked about uh, what did you, this is dragon fruit. Um, thanks, this is wonderful. What did you use to do the highlight? 
Oh, um, so if you're using toned paper, you can use a white colored pencil. I like using a white Prismacolor colored pencil on, um, on toned paper. So I do a lot of my stuff these days on, on a gray toned paper journal. And that allows me to do this. This demonstration I did in Photoshop. So I just changed the color of my uh, stylus uh, that I was drawing with from uh, dark purpley blue to white and put those in. But with real media in a real sketchbook, that's where I'm reaching for my Prismacolor white, um, Prismacolor Premier pencil. Um, a, another thing that um, you could do is you could use permanent white gouache. Um, but all of these things I would do, uh, if, if you have put watercolor on, you want to wait till that watercolor dries before any of those things will show up. Um, if you're just using graphite pencil, what I recommend doing is just sticking with the, uh, the white color of the paper rather than adding white pencil in on top of graphite. If you add the white pencil in on top of graphite, it'll just smudge the graphite around and you'll get a little gray smear that you won't be able to erase and it's not gonna make you happy. Um, but if you put watercolor down and made something that's darker, then that will show up. And let's take one more question about bird beaks. And I know we haven't done ducks, we have not done shorebird beaks, and we haven't done raptors. Uh, right. Um, the one related question would be um, where to um, our eyes always located above the beak line? This is from Barbara Post, Michigan. So generally think for placing your eyes, let me get this square, all right? For placing your eyes, the eye is going to go above this line, again, closer to the front than you think it should be. I'll often draw in a little highlight, and then there's that dark center of the eye. You put in a little highlight in your bird eye and they kind of look wet and they start feel like they're looking back at you. Um, this bird needs some, some lures. Um, the, for songbirds and stuff, anybody who pecks for a living, the eye is sighting right down the beak. Mm. But, so like in an egret, you'll look at the, the, you know, we'll draw the egret head here. So the e egret, there's actually no feathers here. It's skin and tissue that goes right. So you can see the eye just looking straight down, straight down the bill here. Um, uh, there he is. Um, but, but, for birds that are not into pecking, like let's say a swan or a goose, um, there the beak is set low in the head. There's a large puffy cheek and the eye sits right up on top of that little cheek. So this guy doesn't have to be deadly accurate with that peck. Uh, just needs to get your, but would actually like to kind of keep um, its, its beak out of the muck. Uh, I mean, its eye out of the muck. When the beak is down in the muck, um, the, uh, that eye isn't, isn't getting all, all gunky. So, but for our songbirds, 
and garden birds, um, this is the, 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 the pattern to look for. Are there, do you see any other questions? That are, we ought to hit right at this time. Hold on, there's some more requests about uh, more, maybe another class on eyes, bringing them to life, a whole video, um, or maybe nostrils, a little bit more about how to do nostrils. Um, foreshortening is a request, spring flower, spring wildflowers. Um, and, but I, I know that it's after one o'clock and I wanted to um, oh, make actually, sure that they know how to, yeah, so they, they know how to support you before um, oh, you leave. Yeah. So let, let me uh, just sort of, uh, uh, just I'll do a little wrap up here. Thank you for helping me keep on time. I just get uh, so much fun kind of looking around while we're doing this, I, I look around and I look at people. <laughs> Faces and I'm like I miss I miss all you guys. Um, so the um, so thank you so much for joining us. This again is the Nature Journal Workshop. And uh, hold on, let's see if and oh I'm upside down. Hi. Hey. Um, so this is the Nature Journal Workshop, and um, every week again I'm going to be here. Actually, twice a week giving you tips and ideas about how to draw different, uh, different things for your nature journals. Um, if it's possible to support me, you can go right to my website. There is a, there's a, a link uh, on my website to be able to, to donate to support me. There's lots of other ways and other things that you can do right now to help also support our community at large. I want to really encourage anybody who is able to to um, donate blood right now. Um, there's a real blood supply shortage because they're not able to kind of pull up to, to businesses, but maybe the Nature Journal Club can step into the breach. So if you've got some, um, some healthy veins, you know, um, go uh, donate some of those. Um, but you can also donate um, cash on my website. Um, and I greatly appreciate that. If that doesn't work with your funding and financing at this time, please don't worry about that. I want you here. I want you journaling. I want you out with your family, uh, six feet apart from anybody else, and, uh, and, and, and doing nature journaling. This is a really great time for us to kind of come together and be able to do that. Um, but let's also find ways of, of looking for how we can be kind and still really get ourselves to think like a community. Um, appreciate that. Um, thank you all very much. And we will be back um, on Thursday with more tips and tricks for you. Take care. Oh, Melinda, also thank you so much for, for helping me um, pull all this together. Sure, of course. Take care.